Hi uh, guys, Let's Roll 101 here again. It's time for the Sawyer 7 Mage reaction video. He's talking about the truth about superhero movies today. So yeah, I like to listen to this guy. Follow this guy as well. He's got great YouTube videos, great content, great views. So yeah, check him out. Oh yeah, also follow me on Patreon. Don't need to Patreon, I should say. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Let's go. Hello, everybody. Hope you're okay. So what makes a good superhero movie? I think that's a fair question, and I think it's a question that a lot of people don't give a lot of consideration to, so I've decided to talk about it. But first, uh, I feel like I'm obligated to tell you that I have seen the Rotten Tomatoes classic Thor Ragnarok. Without any spoilers, Thor Ragnarok is essentially a movie about Asgard being in trouble and then Thor being away from Asgard for over half the movie. Overall though, it was fine. It was entertaining. Uh, it was humorous. But there's a part of me that secretly yearns for something else whenever I sit down to watch a superhero movie. And I strongly suspect that I'm not the only one who feels this way. And I guess this video is kind of like me sort of expressing that desire and what I mean by it. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me not too long ago. Uh, I think it was, it was during the time that Spider-Man Homecoming had to come out in theaters and I was I was in Target going out of the store and this little kid was like holding the hands of his mom and dad and I think he was trying to convince his parents to take him to go see Spider-Man Homecoming. And one of the, one of the things this little kid said as we were, you know, walking out of the store, I was ahead of them, but I overheard this little kid say, I've been hearing that it's one of the best superhero movies of all time. So when I heard that, you know, I thought to myself, gee, that's a very, very bold claim to say that this new movie is one of the best superhero movies of all time. And then I thought to myself, I, I wonder where this little kid heard that from. Experience the best reviewed Marvel movie of all time. Thor Ragnarok, PG-13, now playing. The problem with saying that something is the best of all time is that that's literally a card that you have to use sparingly. You can't use it over and over again consecutively because if you do that over and over again, sooner or later people are gonna realize, well, this thing that you're saying that it's the best of all time, it doesn't mean anything anymore because you say it every time. And you know, I get it. At the end of the day, these studios are trying to sell their movies. It's, it's perfectly fine. It is a business after all, except of course for the studio heads in charge of Star Wars because they have always made a genuine effort to put the fans first. We love you, Kathleen Kennedy. It's not enough that currently the retail industry is going under because nobody really wants to leave their house anymore. You could just order anything you would want to buy at the store online and get it by tomorrow. But now we're looking at the beginning of the movie theater industry going under as well. In 10 years time, nobody will have to go out of their house for anything anymore. But I digress, I'm sorry. What I'm trying to address is, is sort of like, okay, what makes something the best superhero or one of the best superhero movies of all time? Realistically speaking, because before Thor Ragnarok came out, I saw a lot of reviews. And the main word that I kept seeing floating around is that it was fun. It was a fun movie. Go check it out because it was a fun movie. See, this is why I rate this guy. So much great points. See, it's another one. And granted, at times it can be very hard to review a film without any spoilers or without giving too much away, right? Before the embargoes lift. But whenever I, I just like watch these, these videos and the main thing that comes up is that it was fun. I feel like it's a disservice to the audience who watches the review. And I feel it's also a disservice to the movie itself. So what I did is that I took the liberty of writing my own review for the movie. I try my best not to give anything away. I'm gonna read it to you and hopefully people find it a little bit more informative than me just saying that it was just a really, really good time. Thor Ragnarok is an average film that does not deserve excessive praise nor unrestrained negativity. Some of its jokes land and others fall into the abyss. Loki works well as a side character and serves to balance out the considerable lack of interaction between Thor and Hela in the movie. 
The action is visually appealing overall, but the power and presence of the Incredible Hulk is Disney-fied by either cutting his fights short or stopping them altogether before they even begin. On the bright side, not only does the story leave Thor with some new cosmetic and interpersonal consequences, but it also pushes him to learn a significant lesson about the true source of his power, as well as the essence of his homeland. But my main issue in regards to, like nowadays, how people just say that, oh, like these superhero movies are just fun and entertaining, and they're there for laughs, essentially, and as long as you just get a laugh, that's that's all good. We don't really care. Well, nobody's going to rewatch it anyway, so it was just, it was just a, a good old time and then you just kind of like throw it away and then on to the next one. My main issue with that is that it definitely, I think, it lessens what, in my opinion, is the essence of a superhero. And that is the ability to inspire other people. Some of you may be thinking like, what do you mean? Like, how is the inspirational aspect of the superhero? Exactly. Do you hear this guy talking? He's saying the truth. Preach, man. Preach. So captured, like on film, like what are some examples? And I think one of the best examples, but I think it's overused, is the moment in Wonder Woman when she steps out of the trenches. It's the no man land scene. But there's another scene in the movie that I think is almost, if not, I think in terms of dialogue, it's probably the most powerful scene in the entire movie. And I'm going to act it out for you right now. So Diana is like, Steve, Steve, why are they still fighting? You killed the God of War, you stopped the war. Why are they still fighting? They killed children, Steve. And Steve is kind of like this. Because maybe it's them. He's like spitting all over the camera because he's very passionate about what he's saying. Because maybe it's them. Maybe, maybe not everyone is good. Aries or no Aries. Don't you think I get it after what I've seen? Don't, don't you think I wish that I could tell you that there's just one guy to blame? There's not. We're all to blame. In Age of Ultron, Tony Stark has a very short quote, which is actually a reference to a previous quote from Captain America. And it's when Ultron just comes in with his robot army and he's like, this is the best I can do. You know, how could you possibly expect to defeat me? And Tony just says, like the old man said, together. And then that moment just kind of segues into an epic action sequence, which because it's a superhero movie, you cannot forget the action. Action is just as crucial as the roles of the characters to inspire. There's also a pretty big moment in Dark Knight Rises when Commissioner Gordon is pretty much like about to say goodbye to Batman because Batman is about to sacrifice himself to save Gotham City. And Commissioner Gordon asks him, wait, before you go, like, who are you? Shouldn't the people know? who it was that saved their city. And Batman responds by saying this, and I still carry these words with me in the back of my head, like wherever I go, he tells him that a hero can be anyone, even a man doing something as simple and reassuring as putting a coat around a little boy's shoulder to let him know that the world hadn't ended when his parents died, which is a reference to himself when he had lost his parents and Commissioner Gordon was there to sort of like comfort him. It's a great, great moment. Those are the types of moments that I feel have like been lessened and kind of like, you know, started to become absent in a lot of these movies. And so I really hope that as we move forward, these movies can kind of, you know, sort of regain and retake part of that essence that I feel has like sort of begun to, to get a little lost in, in the uh, mix of things. But also the stupidest thing that I've seen floating around, because a lot of people tend to think in binaries, right? is that people think that automatically because something is meaningful, it can't be fun. And because something is fun, it can't be meaningful. When in fact, ideally, a superhero movie, a good superhero movie should try and be both. By the way, I'm talking to both DC and Marvel in this, you know, I, I, I couldn't care less, you know, which side you actually prefer, because at the end of the day, both of them fall within the same genre. I'm about to give you two primary extreme examples of what's up, okay? So I'll start with DC first, Batman v Superman. A lot of people, and by that I mean the general audience, walked out of that film feeling like, wow, this, this film is, is really serious. It's, it's totally dark and it's very serious. The amount they actually spent fighting each other was actually pretty short-lived considering the entire length of the movie and it was a very serious movie. So you would ask, did you have fun? Did you enjoy it? Well, I don't know, but it was very serious and, and totally dark. On the opposite side, on the other extreme, you have like something like Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2, where it's like, well, what did you take away from the movie? You know, what did you take away from it? Guarantee, most people would say, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. And so the ultimate goal, in my opinion, would be 
for both sides to inspire each other, you know, via competition. And I think the need for innovation is going to become crucial as we continue to move forward. Because if you think about it, each of these phases or each of this, I guess each of these movies really is kind of like its own condensed. Uh, if, if you look at it in terms of manga and anime, it's kind of like its own condensed arc, mini arc. And so these mini arcs, and by the way, both DC and Marvel have them. Like Marvel has like what they call phases. And then DC has like what we call as of right now, like what people are calling the uh, Zack Snyder saga. But, you know, they kind of lead to the same place in DC side. They lead to the Justice League and in the Marvel side, they lead to the Avengers movies. And the thing about these story arcs, whether it be in anime and manga or in superhero movies, is that the structure from a story standpoint is very similar, but each of them in theory should have something that makes it stand out from the others, that makes it unique and different from the rest, so that you're not just constantly rewatching the same anime arc over and over again. And so it's going to be up to the studio heads and the people involved in the filmmaking process to come up with more creative ways of telling these individual superhero movies or these superhero stories. And so my hope is that Justice League does something innovative. All right. Infinity War comes out, matches that innovation in its own way. All right. And then we that opens up the door to a different type of approach when it comes to these movies. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Comment down below your thoughts. Uh, what did you think about Thor Ragnarok and you know the state of uh, superhero movies in general? And what would you like to see more in the films? I think that's a very important question that not a lot of people are asking. So uh, thanks a bunch for watching. If you would like to leave a thumbs up and subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, if not, thanks again anyway. And I'll catch you here for uh, my review of Justice League. I'll talk about Justice League. After that, it's Black Panther. And then after that, it's uh, Infinity War. And then after that, we'll see what happens to this apparently never-ending wave of uh, cinematic universes based off of comic books. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> Guys, did you see that? See, this guy just said it perfectly. There's no message for these movies anymore. There's no message that you're coming away from. Like, there's no feeling that you've learned something when you watch these movies. That's what superhero movies should be. You should be learning a lesson each time you watch a superhero movie. It's just the throwaways. Oh, it's fun. It's happy. Ah, la da, la da, la da. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing you're getting from these movies now. That Spider Man, like, the Tobey White Saga does great part of my great responsibility. So, Homecoming lost that. Lost that meaningful side of it. That's why Hong Kong didn't do as well as the Tobey Maguire saga. It lost all, lost all that significance. With superhero movies nowadays, don't have the significance of like the meaning behind the comic book that they're adapting. It's, the meaning is gone. It's just trying to make it lighthearted, make it kid friendly, laugh out loud stuff. It's just, it's a fail for me. So. Yeah, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about that as well. And sorry, Seven Mages, a message. So yeah, follow him. She's on YouTube. I think he's got a Twitter. I think so. Oh yeah, so check me out. Donate on Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram. You know where to find me. I'll put it in the description box below. So yeah, that's me done with my video. I'm out. Catch you all. One on one. Done.